Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to lap valves on a pit bike engine. Now this does go for all four stroke engines, be it a car, a motorcycle, a dirt bike, pit bike, go-kart engine. It's the same concepts for all of them. You get yourself some valve grinding compound, uh, obviously your valves, and they usually come with these suction cups in different size. I made one fit to my impact, makes it a lot easier. Um, I would suggest getting used to doing it by hand first so you understand what needs to be done because using an impact, you could ruin your seats if it just starts getting wobbly and all over the place. It could just not seat right. But I've done this uh, on cars, I've done this on pit bikes. So what I usually start off doing is I wrap this end in blue masking tape and I insert that into a regular drill. I take a brass, like uh, I'll show you guys, I'll take a brass brush like this and I'll spin this in the drill. You use the masking tape so you don't damage the actual valve stem so that it doesn't leak oil or anything. And you spin it pretty fast and you just work it on the bottom and the tops and you get all of the carbon buildup off. Sometimes I use like a little scraper on the top on the edges, but as you can see, you want a shine. It, uh, it's good to get rid of the carbon buildup, one, and uh, two, it gives it a better surface for the suction cup to stick to. So, what you do is, I'm going to start with the intake side. What you do is, you take your valve grinding compound, and you don't need a lot. You just want to basically dab a little bit on the outside where it seats. So you work that on just enough to get it to seat. Because that's all you're really doing. I guess I'm going to load this guy up too while we're here and have it. Sorry, I was doing that off the camera. I didn't realize. But yeah, you just put a little bit of this stuff on the actual seat of the valve. I did the same thing with the intake. You just, you put it right on the, uh, the edge of the seat. Then, make sure your hands are clean. You don't want this stuff getting into your actual valve seal. And you slide that into your head. Then you want to use your tool or your hand and you want it to spin and grind. You'll hear the difference in sound. Right now it's, you hear it's very raspy sounding. That's because it's cutting the new seat. and see how it got quiet. That's the compound actually doing its job. It's breaking down into a smaller grit to uh, smooth out all the imperfections. So you wanna keep lifting after you turn a little so that it, uh, it gets all the grinding compound ground down. center now you don't want to put a lot of force it's got my camera shaking sorry about that guys should be fine then you get yourself I have a little rag over here 
and when you clean that off, you'll notice the, let me try to get good lighting, the outside edge is now a flat, smooth surface. And since you use the valve grinding compound, this flat surface will reciprocate on the seat because that's what it was grinding against. That's why you want to grind it into a really fine, fine grit where it will make no sound. It starts off, it's very raspy. You can feel it kind of grinding and cutting. And then it gets, uh, it gets gradually quieter. You just keep lifting the valve and, um, you know, dropping it back in. And that's how you get that seat cut really nice. I do this on pretty much everything. The first thing that uh, I actually did this on was a, uh, I don't know if you guys are any of the uh, subscribers from back, back, back in the day, but I was doing an Integra motor, B18, and that was, I believe, the first motor I ever did this on. And it came out really, really nice. The valve seat really, really well. Um, I'm not gonna drop these in just yet. Uh, I like to um, wash the head out because you don't want this stuff inside when you're um, assembling anything. You should install these even when you're working on this. You should be installing this with uh, I kind of skipped this method because I, I had these cleaned already, but you should put a little bit of uh, oil, not too much, just a little bit to lubricate it so that it's not dry spinning inside the, uh, the shaft, the guide. Um, let's see. I didn't like the way that sounded. It sounds a little gritty going in there, but you catch the uh, the gist of what I'm getting at with these. You just want it to, why am I using that? And then the same method, but for the exhaust side. As you can see, it's the same, let me get out of the light, on there. That little cut edge is what you want. So these ones are all ready to go. I might uh, go through them one time by hand just because uh, I, I built up a good sense of feel for this job specifically from uh, doing it multiple times. and. Uh, you can, you can definitely feel it. I mean, I might not mess with them anymore because you don't want to, you know, keep going and going and going and going, obviously, because, you know, it's like your valves will seat, but it's just more wear and tear where it doesn't need to be. You only need to, you know, work each one for like, you know, a minute, not even, you know, you're not, uh, you're not building a house of steel. You're just grinding down your valve seat so that they seal and are airtight. And I've said this in other videos, but the way you would check this is once the head is fully installed, get yourself a good penetrating lubricant like PB Blaster, which is a very good penetrating lubricant. Um, you would get the head set up, the valves would be closed, you would pour, once you, you put a spark plug in the spark plug hole and you would fill this to the top with the penetrating lubricant. Now, you would want to look inside the exhaust or the intake port for any of the penetrate 
any of the penetrant penetration lubricant to be coming out. If you see it coming out of either side, that's the side that's not sealing correctly. That's my version of a leak down test and it has worked for me. Some people might tell you don't do that, it doesn't work. I, I don't agree. Everything, uh, things work for different people because people do things differently. So um, on that note, I'm gonna end the video here. I, uh, I actually have a few things finished. I got the, uh, the cylinder honed out. Nothing crazy. Um, pretty much I, I got it at the, uh, like the, four, the 45 degree that you would look for. I got the glaze off of it. So it's set to go. The, um, well, almost put that upside down. The gasket surfaces are all cleaned and ready to go. Then this head could go on and that's gonna be my top end video for that bike. So that's probably gonna be the next video. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna post this video up probably after the build, who knows. Um, but I'm gonna get working on this build today, get it done and hopefully get her fired up so that uh, you guys can see her run. Still gotta get the rear brake. I gotta get the rear brake caliper or restore the one that I have, which I actually can do. So I might rebuild that one or just buy a new one, have that set up, get the plastics, the exhaust set up, everything tight. I got my new tube, no pinches, and she should be ready to go. So uh, until the next video, you guys stay tuned and uh, keep riding.